Olivia Markham, Portfolio Manager of the BlackRock World Mining Trust. Olivia, very good to have you, Thank you. with us. What do you expect from the trade war conversation? Is that something that you have to make assumptions about before assessing where you think prices will go for metals? So, I mean, trade wars have absolutely dominated the commodity space really since the summer of this year. Um, you know, if you look at the commodity prices today, the market has priced in a fairly bearish scenario. If you look at the copper price down 15% since the middle of the year, we're actually now beginning to price in demand destruction. So, you know, it's really going to be key where we get to in terms of, you know, trade negotiations. The G20 is a, a clear focus point. But for us, you know, we're looking at what's happening on the ground and the supply and de demand dynamics are actually mm. reasonably solid. And, and if I bring in this chart, that kind of talks to your point, doesn't it? This is uh, some of the uh, background factors that can influence the copper price. And this, uh, obviously, we've seen a fall, as you say, 15 percent year to date in the copper price. Uh, but here we've got inventories coming down. And you say that there are things in the background that mean that this is maybe what oversold at 15 percent weaker? Yeah, I mean, we, you know, at the end of the day, it's the supply and demand that really influences price. We're seeing inventories draw, premiums are rising, um, you know, demand from companies remains strong. And this market is meant to move into deficit in the next 12 to 18 months. So for us, yes, the price looks like it's moved too far. There's actually quite an interesting comparison you can look at. It. It's comparing the financially traded commodities and the non-financially traded commodities like iron or thermal coal, coking coal, which have been remarkably stable over this entire period. So once again, I think this is all about sentiment mm. more than actual current demand. So is it, well, yeah, what does that tell you then? There's something being expressed in these uh, well-traded commodity prices yeah. that is not there in the, in the fundamentals. Absolutely. So you could, if you look at the futures markets where people take positioning, um, or they position in the speculative market, you know, we've seen a big liquidation in, in the longs at the beginning of the year, people moving to net short. So yes, I think this is all about sentiment. You know, people are, are concerned about what future demand might look like but what we're really focused on is what we're seeing on the ground right now but also what's China's response to these trade wars. Yeah I mean isn't it sensible if you start to see some of the global PMIs coming off and if you start to be concerned about global growth it's sensible maybe to position for weaker commodity prices as a result? Yeah I mean I think you know if we look at what sort of China's doing I mean one of the key areas of weakness in the economy from a fixed asset investment perspective has been infrastructure spending. Now, infrastructure spending, having been growing sort of double digit levels for the best part of the last decade, has actually turned negative this year. You know, the government is very aware of this, they're, they're aware of sort of the need to manage the economy and they've already started to increase that infrastructure spending again. And this is something that we're watching very, very closely because it's such a major component of commodity demand. So that demand. was a negative for commodity prices, but it should turn into a positive as they reset. The run rate is looking better. So we've already seen, you know, we had negative data prints in August, September turned slightly positive and October has been a strong month with 10% year on growth in infrastructure spend. Every time we've spoken recently to uh, your colleague Evie Hambro, uh, we've talked about discipline in the sector, about mining companies, uh, you know, the, the, the shareholders wanting them to remain disciplined in terms of capex. Has that been a defining feature of this cycle that miners have learned very much from last cycle and not overextended? We very much hope so. <laughs> so I think, you know, we've, we've seen, you know, a real change in just sort of capital allocation, far greater focus on shareholder value over the last couple of years. You know, companies today are spending substantially less capex than in the price cycle, almost half those levels, and they're being very, very focused on maintaining strong balance sheets, maximising the cash generation of the business, and also returning the profits to shareholders in the form of dividends and now buybacks. We started this conversation, Olivia, talking about global trade. We have uh, expectations for some news flow from Xi and Trump when they meet. Our Markets Live team are asking this question today. Which asset will see the largest reaction to a US-China trade surprise? I suppose you have to conclude which way, what, the, what will the surprise be? But which of the assets that you look at will react most, do you think? Once again, I think it's going to come down to the commodity complex. Copper tends to be the bellwether, the most traded. It's sold off harder than others on, on good underlying kind of fundamentals. So you know, we would expect to see the biggest bounce there. OK, thank you very much, Olivia. Olivia uh, joining us there from um, BlackRock. Olivia Markham, Portfolio Manager of the BlackRock World Mining Trust.